Well, yes, it's absolutely amazing news. It's finally happening, years in the making, but it's now here. AJ versus Wilder. No, it's not. It's, it's not AJ versus Wilder. What? AJ's not fighting Wilder. What do you mean? They're on the same fucking card. Yeah, I know, but AJ's fighting Wallin and Wilder's fighting Parker. Oh, bloody hell, you're winding me up, aren't you? Well, all right, it's not the exact news we wanted, but ruddy hell, what a card, eh? And I do need to mention people. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the double excellent turkey for putting on this card. Blimey, we've heard that a few times, haven't we? Fucking hell. But yes, full credit, well done, Double Turkey, for this absolute barnstormer. But what lies in store? How do these interesting matchups play out? And why could there be some very big problems ahead? Well, let's have a look, eh? Strap in. So it's being called the Day of Reckoning. It's probably one of the best fight cards ever made, full of world champions, the biggest names in boxing, and Big Roydy Miller. Yeah, maybe get a replacement ready, Frankie boy, if you know what I mean. You can't be too fucking careful with the old anabolic baby knocking about, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So let's go through it then. Well, the big ones are the mighty AJ against Otto Wallin, Wilder versus Parker, and Dubois versus Miller hopefully. Here's all the other fights which aren't too shabby either, to be fair. So yes, not too bad. Fair play to the double excellent Turkey and Frank Warren. We have to be over the moon with the card. But okay, the burning question is still lurking, in it? Why was it not AJ versus Wilder? Well, in a nutshell, I don't fucking know. But there could be a few scenarios. Let me explain. The first being the IBF belt. After the undisputed, it's expected that the IBF belt will be stripped from the winner. With Hergovic first in line, to fight for it. After Walling's win against Gassiev, he's now number two, and a win for Joshua would put himself in that number two position, leading to a fight with Hergovic next year and the opportunity to become three-time world champion. This, after all, is his plan. I know where I want to go, I know what I want to do, and I'm sticking to that plan. I set out a plan at the start of this year. I stand firm on what I believe, and I believe I'm going to be three-time heavyweight champion of the world. But as I say, there could be other scenarios. Maybe Wilder himself wanted something considered a warm-up fight prior to AJ because he's been so inactive of late. Maybe the Saudis simply didn't want to do all their beans on this show with Wilder Joshua and wanted to save something for the end of the Riyadh season. Who knows? Now, even though Hergovic could spoil the party, it is obvious, though, that intentions are for AJ and Wilder to fight at some point in Saudi if they are emerge victorious on the 23rd. So this night is definitely a very good building block for the mega fight. However, when we say if they emerge victorious, that is actually a big if. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But yes, let's start with old Deontay Wilder then. Well, he touched down with Malik Scott in London on the 14th of November and they only had three words on Instagram for Royal Britannia. You're all fucked. Yeah, well, fair enough. I mean, we already knew that, to be honest, judging by the state of our electric bill every fucking month. But yes, after barely fighting a single round in over two years, it seems he's back and he means business. And though it isn't AJ, it's still a tasty little fight against the well-schooled Joseph Parker. Now, we all know Wilder's record is a little bit kind of ropey, to be honest. Luis Ortiz being his best opponent outside of the Gypsy King, but Parker has been around the block. He's a very experienced former world champion and he comes off a solid win against Simon Keane in Saudi recently. As we know, he's been 12 rounds with AJ and Dillian. He's beaten Chisora twice as well as Takam and Andy Ruiz, with the only heavy blemish on his record, a demolition against Joe Joyce. Now you can have your own opinions on if he's a better fighter than Ortiz, but whichever way you look at it, it certainly has the potential to be a banana skin for Wilder. For one, Parker's been very active. He's on a good streak of form with three wins this year alone, compared to Wilder's poor activity of a two-minute hellenius destruction more than a year ago and two batterings from Fury prior to that. Now, although he was knocked out by Joyce, he has always been regarded for having a decent chin. He has very quick hand speed and he certainly can pack a punch. But most importantly, him and Andy Lee have a vast knowledge of Wilder from being part of the team in the Fury fights. And he may just have the blueprint to beat Wilder. So as long as he stays switched on and doesn't go wandering like he used to, this really could be Wilder's hardest fight bar fury. And it probably is Parker's last crack in the big leagues. So he has everything to play for. Very interesting, actually. Then we have another saucy dust-up, Daniel Dubois versus Big Baby Miller. Now, Derek Chisora says he was offered the fight first, but he turned it down due to the money. I don't know if I believe that, to be honest. But anyway, Daniel stepped up to the plate instead. Now, I'd imagine there will be Varda testing for this fight, and Varda usually turn up a handful of times throughout a fighter's camp. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Frank himself outside Big Baby's gym every day holding a fucking piss cap, because this is not necessarily an easy night for old Dubois. 
Now, first of all, of course, Big Baby won the war of words in the presser, and you can't deny it. I know he's a bit of a Jap side, but he is double entertaining at the end of the day. We smell bitching him. And once the bitch is in you, it ain't going nowhere. Bro, you soften them bitch. You are not doing nothing to me. Watch your mouth. You let my little cousin Miller, Andy Reid Watch your mouth. Hey, you soften them baby your mouth. shit. Come over not running from me. Not running watch from Deontay. Mouth. Man the fuck up and fight somebody with a heartbeat, bro. Shut up. So then what about the fight? Well, of course, Miller's been a bit naughty in the past, but whatever way you swing it, he's still undefeated. He's beaten a few names in the past, such as Washington, Wok and Brown. Okay, not well beaters, but he always poses a threat. Constantly coming forward. He weighs about a thousand fucking stones so he's got a lot of weight behind his punches which is clear in his 22 knockouts and yes in general he's just a six foot four double strong absolute lump with a mega trap on him. Okay, potentially a lot of these wins may have been when he was on the old Petty Sherinhams back in the day, but after blasting out Lucas Brown back in March, he'll be brimming with confidence. He can take a punch as well, just to have a look at this. Yes, bosh, blimey. But don't get me wrong, he is very slow. Daniel has fought at a much higher level. He should beat him with his speed and power, of course, but there are many questions still to be answered about his heart when the going gets tough. And if the going does get tough, Will he react the same way he did in the Usyk and Joyce fights? There is an argument to say that this mentality isn't something you can just kick out your system. He's not all of a sudden going to turn into a warrior like Frotchy, for instance, so the jury's out. But there could be some sticky moments in this fight for him, and he may have to dig deep, so let's see if he's defeated his demons. Now, before we get to the big one, let's skim through the rest of the card. A Mac Moodle versus Caballel. Cheeky little fight, this. I mean, he's a bit scary, this bloke, isn't he? Fucking hell. If he knocked at my door and asked to use my toilet, I'd have to wipe his ass for him. But anyway, as we've seen, he certainly can bang. Caballel is, yeah, okay. But yeah, he'll probably be under the cosh in this fight. Then there's Hergovic versus Demori. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what the crack is with this one. The top of the bill are considered banana skins for Josh and Wilder, but this fight is more like a fucking foreskin. So yes, Hergovic wins by a landslide. Then we have Bivol versus Arthur. Well, double fair play to Arthur taking this fight. Only three days prior to the press conference as well, great balls. But yes, it's a huge ask, innit? Bivol will probably show another level on the night, but would love Arthur to bring home the bacon. However, without being harsh, someone who won't be bringing home the bacon is Zorro against Opatire. Sorry, Zorro, bruv, but once again, full credit for having the nuts to get in there with this future sensation. I tip my hat to you, bruv. But yeah... Good fucking luck. And then finally, we've got Frank Sanchez versus Farr. Not sure if Farr will get very fucking far in this fight. Sanchez should do a number on him. Double speedy. Frank Sanchez versus Hergovic would have been a lot more helmet tingling, wouldn't it? But there we go. We can't complain, can we? Because the card is still mustard. And I'd like to thank the double excellent turkey for putting this card on. But we need to talk about the main event, don't we? Joshy versus Wally. And there's no bones about it. It's another banana skin baby because Wallin's only loss was against the king of the division a fight in which he really held his own he also comes off a very good win an absolute schooling of Gassiev in Russia and his demeanour in this press conference shows he is certainly not short of confidence Yes. Now the one thing that has turned heads around in this fight is Joshua's link up with Ben Davison. Apparently Derek James is still in the mix, but Ben will be taking over this time around. And yes, it seems a bit of a funny one to me when all this year he's been what people would call rebuilding with Derek, clearly learning a new style. Why in the toughest test of the three bouts this year would you all of a sudden change to a trainer who teaches differently? Changing the way you train, different pad work, different game plan, etc. It's a bit of a puzzler to me, but maybe there's more to it than we know. I hope it turns out to be a good move. Anyway, now then, here's the juicy stuff. Well, these two have actually fought twice before in the amateurs. Joshua winning by decision both times. Make of that what you will. Wallin has only had one knockout win in his last 10 fights, which may tell a little story about his power. However, he has only touched the canvas once in the amateurs and never in the pro game, which may tell a story about his chin. But what really sparks intrigue in this fight is Wallin being a southpaw. Joshua's last southpaw outing with Usyk was rather unsuccessful. It's fair to say Wallin doesn't move as well as Usyk, but in a nutshell, southpaws can't help but cause problems for orthodox fighters and especially southpaws who are technical boxers like Wallin. However, let's not forget, Wallin has never faced an opponent with the speed and power of Joshua. Outside of Fury, AJ is a different level to all his other opponents, and having beaten him twice before, AJ will be the one coming in with more 
more confidence. It may have been a while ago in the amateurs, but psychologically, it still plays a part. And even though he has been criticised for his hesitation to pull the trigger in recent times, you can't deny now that Joshua has a look about him. A look that says, I've got the right fucking ump. But yes, it's a look that says I do intend to do some serious damage. To silence the doubters, he will be looking to put on a show. So yes, based on Wallin's back foot style of late, it does lead many to believe there's a good chance this fight goes to points. But Joshua is always dangerous with that equaliser. And if he finds a sweet spot, Wallin will be in a world of trouble. So bring it on, ruddy exciting stuff. I'll do some more detailed vids on this card double soon, so stay tuned for that. And check out our Pony Podcast, where me and the chaps break down the whole night like a mad ting. Say less, toodle pip for now, bosh. Osh, yes, bosh. <laughs>